we're back recording and uh, let's see if I can go on Facebook Live again. Okay, hold on a second. Can you hear me? I can. Okay, that's great. Okay, go live. Okay, and here we are live again. <laughs> in a new location. <laughs> in a new location, no longer Chicago, back in Denver. <laughs> <laughs> so um so Jean, we were talking about a um your grandpa book. Uh -huh. And um and I think that we're going to do another another a interview that's dedicated to uh your trilogy to the grandpa book. Um and um I just um I just want to tell you that you have inspired me. Um I uh I get a lot of inspiration from your writing. Uh, you've frozen on me again. Um, and um, and I would have to say that right now, my favorite book of yours is, is Still Truman, which is, I think, the, the first one that I fell in love with. Um, so you want to share a few words about Truman and why I love him more than the other books? Do you love Truman more than the other books? Oh, I see. He 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 does make a cameo. Oh. He does make a cameo appearance in Sylvie. More than a cameo experience. Right. 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 So, so Truman was inspired by a tortoise friend of mine named Hagrid who belonged to a writer friend of mine named Sarah, who used to live in Denver, where I live. Um, and Sarah and I would get together. We would have little, you know, writing sessions together. And during that the, time, the, the, the book, of course, the book she would was dedicated to them. Your book was dedicated, it was dedicated to, them. to them. No, it was dedicated because during that time, Sarah and Sarah also had a full-time job and she'd have, the, we'd have these writing sessions and she would leave Hagrid at home. And she always spoke about him kind of like, you know, another person in her apartment. And I always wondered what he was thinking, what he was up to when she would leave him all day. Um, and, and sure enough, I got to go visit him at her house. He spent one Christmas at my house with Sarah and my family. Um, and, and I think it, it, that book started actually with an adult main character who, who was a writer. And after several rounds of revisions, Sarah became a little girl going off for her first day of school, um, which on so many levels, then, you know, the bravery, everything it takes to take those next steps, their lives were sort of parallel. And, and I think the reason why it worked is because Sarah and Truman were actually probably experiencing the exact same emotions at the exact same time, you know, her going off. I think she had trepidation and of course he did as well. So, and then, okay, but Truman wouldn't be Truman without the amazing art of Lucy Ruth Cummins. Am I right? Absolutely. Like, oh my gosh. What struck gold when they paired me with Lucy. Um, and I remember still the email from Emma Ledbetter, my editor saying, so I, I'm thinking about Lucy Ruth Cummins. She has this adorable sketch of a turtle is that even a possibility? <laughs> yes, yes, I hope she says yes. So I'm so glad she did. So um, of all, and, and Truman is your most celebrated uh, work, right? It's the one that won the most prizes or am I wrong? Probably, yes. Yeah, it's probably gotten the most recognition. Yeah. It's beautiful. Oh, thank it, it, you. It's so poignant, you know, the, the turtle, his 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 journey around the world is essentially crossing the living room, right? No. <laughs> the hero's journey, what it takes to get from one side of the rug to the other, right? <laughs> Incredible. And uh, and also next time we also want to talk about your trilogy, um, which is uh, which is marvelous. 
Um, our internet again is, uh, is unstable. So um, before we sign off of part one, um, I want to thank you again for being on this uh, difficult uh, rocky interview. I feel a little bit like Truman myself. Um, <laughs> thank you so much for inviting me. It's been a pleasure. Are you are you kidding? I dream of inviting you. This was like <laughs> a great joy for me. And um, even though you you turned a lot of my thoughts on their head, but maybe that's a good thing. Um, what advice do you have as a one in a million celebrated author, famous all over the world, uh, award-winning, um, multi-deal, multidisciplinary. What is your advice uh, to aspiring authors uh, beyond getting a, an MBA degree? <laughs> this might, I think it's, it, it's in line with what I said earlier, and this might sound totally hokey, but it's not. And that's, to listen to your heart. Like don't, you know, don't try to go where the market is going. We all know that doesn't work. You know, by the time your good book gets published, we're on to new things. But if, if there's a story there in your heart, follow that story because then you can work to get that onto paper. If you start with a story and then you're trying to inject heart into it, that's a much harder process. And it all, it's rarely authentic. So kind of listen to your really authentic self and, and write the story that's in your heart. Is that too corny? That's, no, I, I don't think it's corny at all. It's not corny because um, Debbie Bibo, the uh, wonderful uh, uh, agent from Milano was on the show last week and she says, uh, and this I found very moving, is that she will select the story or an illustration that makes her feel tingly. Yeah, it, it's like that. Like you, you know, there's a different feeling when I say follow your heart. It's you make you feel warm inside. Okay, when I look at the cover of a grand day, I get chills still to this day. And it has everything to do with the art, but it's also knowing what I put into that book. You know, there's a lot of me in that book. Um, and then, okay, here's another much more practical tip. Set a timer. It's so darn easy. It's, it's like story storm. Have you ever done it now, the Pomodoro method? I, a Pomodoro method? It's incredible. So set it for Pomodoro, longer than you think you can. Isn't Pomodoro yeah, you, a, a tomato? Yeah, so it's, it's the, got its name from the little tomato timers that you can keep on your kitchen counter. Set a timer, set it for longer than you think you can write. Um, and then just fill that time, know that you don't have to do anything else after that. The freedom that you get from setting a timer and the stick to itiveness, whatever you want to call it, it's it's kind of a miraculous thing. Like I love that technique. Okay, I don't have a Pomodoro timer. Oh. But I I, I can put a cherry tomato. On yeah, my mantle. You can use your phone. Just keep your phone far away, but set a time. I usually do anywhere from 45 minutes to an hour where I've got my notebook, my pen, or a manuscript in front of me. And, and it forces you to go beyond the first 25 ideas, right? It forces you to, to kind of, oh, I'm still sitting here. Timer's still on. Better figure out a way to make this better. Like, And sure enough, it comes like it comes in those last few minutes. So I love that method. I highly okay, recommend I'm, it. Uh, you invented this method? No, no, it's been around for years. <laughs> Look up Pomodoro never... method or, or setting a timer with writing or any of that. No. Well, what, what I do is I um, just sit down and then it's two hours later and I'm still writing. That happens too. <laughs> yes, yes, that happens. But the, I'm going to try this, you know. Everybody yeah. teaches me something. Yeah. The tomato method. <laughs> Any other of these unexpected ideas? Um, I don't know how unexpected that one was, but but for right now, let me think about that. And then the next time we chat, I'll have a whole so, list. Yeah, because I owe you. You know, we uh, we have a lot of your uh, your recent books to talk about. And uh, if you're willing to come back on the uh, 
show, I would be absolutely delighted to have you. So a multi-celebrated, multi-author. So let's set a multi, date. Multi-freezing up <laughs> today, Jean Reedy. Uh, it's been wonderful to have you. And uh, before I forget, which I'm going to, because I haven't set the timer, maybe I should set the timer for the interviews. Uh, my name is Mel Rosenberg, and I am the host of the Children's Literature. I should have like a, a sign of a prompter. I am the host of the Children's Literature Channel, the New Books Network, and Jean, it's been wonderful to have you, and uh, this is not goodbye because you're going to be on the show, and um, in the meantime, set your Pomodoro and keep writing, everybody. <laughs> Thank you so Thanks. much. Have a wonderful day. Thank you. Bye-bye.